Hey guys, it's John here from Sonic Drive Studio. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you're all doing great. So I own an orange Rockerverb 50 Mark III. And just saying that out loud makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside because I just got this amplifier a couple of months ago. I already made an in-depth demo slash review video on this amplifier. So do check that out in the link up here or in the description down below. But yeah, I've wanted one of these amps for years now. So I'm still super happy to have one. It's almost kind of surreal, you know? So I just love orange amplifiers in general. They have such a unique tone. You know, that sort of warm, full-bodied and sometimes sizzly tone that's just so recognizable and it tends to work very well in a mix. The amps also look really cool and unique and they certainly stand out in a crowd. When you pile up 100 amplifiers in one big pile and you put one orange in between those amps, you'll recognize that amplifier within a second. So that's really cool from a design standpoint. Anyway, I could ramble on about how much I love orange amps for hours. And it's no secret that I love orange amplifiers. I mean, I have seven of them, so it's kind of obvious that I like them. But there's another company out there that I also really like, a quite different company called Line 6. They're one of the coolest and best guitar amp modeling and digital effect companies out there. Their Helix product line is very successful and for a good reason. I love my Helix rack, my HX Stomp, my HX Effects and my Helix Native plugin. I use them a lot. They just sound really good, the effects are top notch and the overall usability is just very good as well. I still find it kind of funny when modeling purists claim that the Line 6 modeling isn't up to par when compared to other modeling platforms. So let's put that to the test again, shall we? Because in the new Helix firmware, Line 6 decided to add a virtual model of the Orange Rockerverb amplifier, the Orange Rockerverb Mark III 100 watt version to be exact. So this new Mandarin rocker model is very cool indeed. I even requested it myself, so thank you for listening, Line 6. But why would I be so happy if I already own the real amp? Well, dealing with tube amps is a lot of fun, but sometimes it's just more convenient to just load up a quick preset in your Helix hardware or in your DAW with Helix Native. It can just really speed up the workflow for things like demos or quick recordings or whatever, even for final recordings. It just sounds really good as well, so why not? So I just like real tube amplifiers and modeling platforms. And that's okay, guys. Those two worlds can definitely coexist in peace. I must say, though, that I think that we as guitarists should not forget about the tube amplifier companies. A lot of the modeling companies such as Line 6 are doing very well and deservedly so, but we should not forget where those tones and amp designs originated. And that's why I tend to think that every guitarist who owns a modeling platform should also own at least one tube amplifier, just as a kind of baseline, so to speak. Anyway, I'm rambling here. Let's get to the point of this video. So of course, we're going to compare my orange Rockerverb 50 Mark III to the Mandarin Rocker model in the Helix, or Helix Native to be exact. The settings that I'm going to use on my Rockerverb are quite basic. It's a very elegant and simple amp anyway. All the EQ controls are at noon, the gain control is at around 1 o'clock-ish, and the master volume is at around 10 o'clock-ish. Now keep in mind that the Helix Mandarin Rocker model was based on the 100 watt version of this amplifier, so not the 50 watt version that I have here. And I think that the difference basically is that this one has two EL34s in the power section and the 100 watt version has double the amount. But I do think that they should sound pretty similar regardless. I'm running both the real amplifier and the plugin through an Ohmhammer impulse response from the Heavy Hitters Collection Volume 1, the 412 ORN cabinet with the V30 speaker option to be exact, and the OH1-05 mic mix. That's one of my all-time favorite impulse responses for using with orange amplifiers or orange amplifier tones. Oh, and one more thing before we go ahead and listen to the full band AB comparison, this is going to be a blind test. And you guys know that I like to do these sort of things, right? And I know that you like it too, come on. Of course, the answer will be revealed very soon, probably next week, but for now, let's just have some fun, okay guys? Okay, so first a full band mix AB comparison. Let's see if you guys can guess which one is which. Have fun.
Great, that sounded pretty darn close. I guess it's safe to say that Line 6 is doing a tremendous job at emulating tube amps these days, right? Okay, now let's listen to that same thing again, but this time with the guitars isolated. Here we go. Okay, well, again, that was very interesting. They sounded very, very close. I could hear some very subtle differences, but yeah, it's safe to say that this is a very close one indeed. Let's give Orange Amplifier some credit for creating this awesome amplifier tone, but let's also give Line 6 some credit for doing a great job at emulating these tones. So absolutely let me know down in the comments which one you thought was the real amplifier and which one was the digital modeling platform or the Helix. Let's see what you guys think. And don't worry if you end up being wrong. There's no shame in that at all because they do sound very close. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button along with the bell to be notified when the follow-up video has been posted, which will probably be next week. Also, please drop a like and a comment. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.